Welcome to the Louis File. Today we're going to look at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 11. Now chapter 11 is, uh, is an amazing, amazing chapter. A lot of people have called it the Hall of Faith. So it goes through the whole history, all the way back from Abel, um, of the Hebrew people. I mean, it goes all the way up to, well, it gets to the point where it doesn't even, it just names names about Barak, Samson, David, and Samuel. I mean, lots of people uh, are covered in this chapter. Some have details, some don't. I am uh, probably not going to attempt to go through each verse or each person that is uh, talked about here, but I do want to uh, start here in verse 1, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Wow. So basically what I think this chapter is telling us is that uh, faith, <clears throat> what says Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, and some Bibles say the evidence of things not seen. But faith will always uh, have something to be seen. Um, and so the rest of this chapter we see that, for instance, Abraham uh, believed God, and at, at one point God had told him to sacrifice Isaac. So in the very act of his willingness to go and tie up Isaac and raise the knife and move toward sacrificing him, we actually see Abraham's faith. Uh, sort of like the letter James, you know, James tells us, show me your faith by what you do. You know, he says, you say you have faith. Well, I want to see it. You know, there's going to be some evidence as is the point. There's going to be something come from it. It's not just some mental believing uh, faith isn't. Faith Faith is actually going to produce something from it. Um, in verse 3, Hebrews 11, 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So it's saying all the worlds, everything that we do see, was prepared and came into being by the word of God. Uh, in the Genesis story, we see God say, And let there be. Let there be light, and there was light, and let there be land, and let there be fish, and let there be cattle, let there be what you know, whatever it is, right? So it came out of God, it came out from Him. Uh, a lot of people want to say that God created everything we see out of nothing, but I believe this this right here tells us that is not true. I believe that uh, nothing comes out of nothing. <laughs> Um, God is someone and he is something and his word, his mind and his creative, you know, his creativity came out in him saying, let there be. And then it, it became, so it came out from God. All of what we see came out from God. So and this might get a little bit deep, but, uh, I've heard it said that matter is really just spirit slowed down. I know that's a, that's a tough one to get your head around, but I don't think we're really supposed to get our head around it. But the idea here is, is that God is spirit, and somewhere in eternity, he has always been, and all of what we see that has created the earth and trees and rocks and people and animals and stars and clouds and, and water, everything that we see in the created realm came out from God who is spirit. So basically the created stuff comes out from some place that is uncreated because God is not created. So he creates the creation out of his own mind and out of his own desire and will to manifest some aspect of his character. Uh, go with me for a second in Romans chapter 1. Romans 1 tells us something that sort of sort of connects with what I'm trying to say here. Uh, Romans 1, 
it says, uh, Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His divine, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. Did you catch that? So God's invisible attributes, eternal power, and divine nature can be seen through what has been made. So all of creation is really a display of who God is. There's some aspect in everything around us that is telling us who God is. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so we're looking at people and plants and animals and stars and the ocean and uh, birds and I mean we're looking at all this stuff and when we have eyes to see we will begin to uh, see through them to God. So back in Hebrews it's saying that everything was created out of what is everything that is visible came from what is not visible. And uh, 2 Corinthians the Apostle Paul tells us something else that connects with this um, 2 Corinthians 4, he says, uh, We don't lose heart, though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. So the outer man, what is seen, is, is decaying and dying, but our inner man, the unseen man, is, is being renewed. It says, For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <laughs> this is what it means to walk by faith. See, we're walking by faith and not by sight. Matter of fact, that's what he says in the very next chapter, 2 Corinthians 5. So, so we're called to be spirit beings, one with a God who is spirit. So we become one spirit with him, and this life here, this visible temporary existence that is filled with rocks and, and, and trees and people and pain and suffering and persecution on an outer body level, uh, that stuff is going to be done away with. So we learn to walk by faith, which means we walk in the spirit, uh, by, by, uh, by the spirit, seeing what God is showing us, in the eternal. Uh, everything in the with these eyes in the outer realm might be trying to come against what we know to be true in the spirit. But all of these people in Hebrews chapter 11 pushed through no matter what kind of trouble was coming their way. Uh, it says that uh, many of them were uh, persecuted, locked up, mistreated. Some of them were cut in half. Um, they went through horrendous horrendous things in their life um, by, by living by faith so it says they were stoned they were sawn in two tempted they were put to death by the sword it went about in sheepskins goatskins being destitute afflicted ill-treated men of whom the world was not worthy wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground and all these having gained approval through their faith did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. So in an earthly sense, there's a whole lot of people that have not obtained what a life that we would think they would be getting. But they pressed on by faith. And they believed in something that couldn't be seen with physical eyes and even sometimes understood in the intellect. Wow, that's a lot. I hope this... Uh, I hope this helps in some way for you to learn to press on, live by faith, walk by faith, and not by sight. And though we're persecuted and uh, pressed down and ill-treated and all kinds of things by the world, by the unbeliever, we still have a hope within us, which is Christ. Christ in us is our hope. So just cling to Him and believe Him and uh, press on. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening.